This is Monday and it's my favorite day. Why? Because it is Mothers of Multifamily. Yes! And today I have a special guest. She is amazing. I want everybody to give a big podcast round of applause for Hua Win. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me on the podcast. I am so good and so honored for you to be here. So everybody, Hua Win has an educational background that started at Tulane University in business school, and then she shifted gears and graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Cell and Molecular Biology and Psychology. What? <laughs> then she went to the University of Hudson College of Optometry with a doctorate degree, of a, a doctorate of optometry degree. She's been practicing optometry for 14 years, and she has been an entrepreneur for 10 of those years. She currently owes, owns two successful optometric practices in Dallas and Plano, Texas, named eyepieces with her husband, Jamie Gonzalez. She takes great pride in building and leading strong teams with a positive culture in her business. She started her real estate journey four years ago and multifamily over two years ago. Her, her first real estate venture started in a resort syndication in Belize because she absolutely loved it there. How like awesome is that? You go somewhere and you're like, I love it here. I'm going to syndicate a resort. Oh my goodness. I love her. Um, that she bought multiple lots of beachfront land in different parts of the island. She bought a lot of land next to the resort and built, oh my goodness, her own custom paradise home for rental. We're going to dive deep into this lady love. We, then she invested in teak and bought land in Nicaragua and Panama. And then she started investing in multifamily as limited partners in 2018. And she is in over 2,300 do doors currently. And she's currently moving over to the active on the GP side of multifamily. She and her husband have an amazing five-year-old daughter whose nickname is Ninja. She loves to travel the world, immerse herself in different cultures and people. She's also very active in her community and she involves herself in tons of nonprofit organizations. Welcome. Wow. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I have to like, I have to usually, usually I like escape and like get out of the bio, but we have to, we have to like really dive deep into this. I'm just going to make sure like I have all this memorized, but before we get into some of the amazing things that you've done, how, how have you done all these things? I mean, you, you have a resort in Belize, you have land in Belize, you have land in Nicaragua and Panama and your two practices, how do you do it? How do you do everything that you do and still have an amazing life? Well, I don't do it alone for sure. You know, yes. my, my husband uh, is amazing. You know, he's amazing husband. We've been together for 15 years, but he's also my business partner in everything that we do. Um, you know, so that, that's been very helpful. And he's very hands-on being a father as well. Um, we like to keep it very simple. We don't like to overcomplicate matters. We break down things in little bite-sized steps. So it doesn't, so if we want to venture into a new avenue, we learn it together. We, and we just pursue it. And so we don't like, oh my gosh, how do we do it? We don't even ask that. We just, okay, baby steps. Like I'm, we're just going to venture and take one step at a time. And that's how we've done, you know, all the different things that we're doing. We have a lot of fun while we're doing it together. We, my big thing is enjoy the journey, you know, and uh, that's key for us is we're very lighthearted. We have fun, lots of laughter. So whatever we do, whether it's at home uh, with our daughter, uh, whether it's in our practice, whether it's multifamily, whatever we're doing, if we're not having fun and enjoying the journey, it defeats why we're doing it, you know, so... That is an amazing mindset. And so often, so many of, I, I know I forget that I'm supposed to be having fun while I do this, you know, especially when stuff hits the fan, you're like, you, you're, and you're in it and you're like in the dregs of everything and something goes wrong or this explodes or, you know, something happens. You have to remember that, you know, you could seriously choose to do something else, but we all chose this life. We chose to be in large multifamily, we chose to be in real estate. We chose for you, you chose to get your doctorate and you're doing something that your heart is in. Cause I can tell your energy 
It's just you, you, you say that you do things so you can have fun in them. And I know you do. So let's, let's dive a little bit more deeper in, into that. You said, because for, for a lot of new entrepreneurs and people, especially people who go from like single family homes or from their nine to five or any like job, like for instance, optometry, and they jump into real estate, the first thing that they, that attacks them is the overwhelm of it. How do you get over that? And I know you said bite-sized steps, but can you dig a little bit deeper into that? Sure. So first, you know, because we have two practices and we've owned it now, you know, we've been an entrepreneur for 10 years. And within that journey of learning, we used to have lots of hours. I used to work seven days a week, work 21 days straight, have one day off, lived very conservatively. But through our journey of building our practices, we learned how to manage our time and delegate. So we learn it first we train others to do it and we free up our time. So that's huge for us to be able to learn how to free our time so that we can spend our time uh, more efficiently in other aspects. And when we ventured into doing real estate, you know, we went to a lot of different seminars and the biggest thing and the fastest collapse of time is just meeting people and learning from them and modeling other successful um, people in that space. So, you know, we, um, that's how we started in Belize and that's how we started in the multifamily. And it's, we're huge on relationships and connecting with people and learning the ropes there. We also attend lots of seminars and things like that too, but I think collapsing the time and just hands-on experience and just diving in is, is just much faster that way. That is, that is amazing. And I love that mindset of making sure you have the relationships, you go to the seminars, you go to the masterminds, you make sure to take in all the information that others have done before you, because like I like to say, and this is not a new idea. One of my favorite quotes is no new ideas, no new ideas. Cause like, for instance, being an optometrist, do you think of everything that you do? Do you make up your own, your own glasses? No, no. So it's the same with real estate folks. So for my listeners out there that are questioning how to get into real estate or especially my mamas out there that have their children that are watching their children that are now teaching their children and the papas, this might be the perfect time. Because another thing that I like to think about is like, there really isn't any excuses. If this is something you want to do and you're passionate about it, be like my friend here, be like Hua, dive in, do what you do, what you think is fun and do it. Okay. So talking about fun. (laughs) So I'm, I'm originally from Hawaii. I've always wanted to buy land in Hawaii. I love it too. I've always wanted to buy land there. And I just, for some reason I have like this mindset of like it's too expensive I can't do it blah 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 so I buy that elsewhere and I syndicate elsewhere but I'm always looking I love the fact that you go to Belize you love Belize and then you syndicate a resort so the resort I didn't actually (laughs) syndicate it myself I participated in the syndication the lands I bought on my own the custom home I built on my own but it's amazing I went there on a girl's trip Peely in 2015 and I called my husband and I said we're buying something here (laughs) and he said hold on (laughs) wait don't buy anything yet I need to come over there he goes we travel all over the world why there and I said I'll I'll have to bring you back here you'll understand why you know and we go back back and forth there all the time you know so it was it just that was our first stepping stone into real estate because at the time, we really didn't know much about multifamily yet, you know. What an amazing stepping stone, though. But it just goes to show your mindset. You see something, you're like, I love it here. I'm going to figure out how to get into this market. And you get into it. And it's not it, like some people have this have a block because of trying to go out of state or even to like get into large multifamily because they, they see anything like over four units and they like ex- their mind explodes. But you saw a resort in Belize, which is not in the like 50 states. Uh, like 
that is huge, especially for your first syndication. And I know you say you didn't syndicate it yourself. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's still your first syndication. How do you have, like, explain to me that mindset. Explain to me that willingness to jump in to, into doing something that you know is right. So at the time, and the reason why we ventured into multifamily, I mean, not multifamily, just real estate in general, was we wanted to, you know, everyone talks about this financial freedom and time, mm -hmm. you know, and that was huge for us is what other ways can we have avenues of income come in instead of just our optometry practices. And we always knew, well, I know a lot of successful people in multifamily or just real estate in general. So I was like, well, I didn't really know much at the time yet, um, but just knowing that that was where we wanted to go. And we just learned, and it's like we immerse. Once, once we want to do something, my husband and I, we fully immerse ourselves. So even though if it's like, oh, it's only been a year or two years or whatever, it's true immersion. It's spending lots of time and lots of networking and lots of things in a compressed time to truly immerse and learn it. That's the only way that we like to do things instead of like dabbling. I don't like to dabble in things. It's like if I would put my heart and passion to it, I go wholeheartedly, 100%. I'm in. I want to learn it. I want to do it. Yeah, that's a great mindset to have because dabbling, just that word feels like a waste of time. Right. If you, if you get into something, get into it wholeheartedly and multifamily is no joke. Once right. you start, once you start going down into that rabbit hole, you need to keep on digging and keep on digging and keep <laughs> on learning. And the network and the people that are in this asset class are so fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're always so willing to help. I remember when we first started, Oh, I want to backtrack because you said, I do this a lot. Sorry. I do tend <laughs> because I just, I just had a, a, like a remembrance. You said only two years. Okay. For my listeners out there, take the word only. Try, try. I know it's really hard, but try and take the word only out of your vocabulary. So Hua has only been doing this for two years, and yet she has a syndication in Belize. She has property in Belize. She has like probably my fantasy house in Belize. She has she's invested in teak, and she has property in Nicaragua and uh, and Panama, and she has over twenty eight hundred units. And she what what am I missing? And you're going on the GP side, so she's only done all of that. Take it, take a moment. Let that let that sit with you. So take the word only out of your vocabulary, folks. Even if you have, quote, only read a book, take that education and take that next step forward and take that next step forward and take that next step forward. And one day, very soon, you're going to be exactly where Hua is, exactly where she is. And then you're going to go above and beyond. So back to you. What were we talking about again? <laughs> So you're, you fully immerse yourself into what you do. And that's the, really the only way to do it is to fully immerse yourself, get into large multifamily and just do it. So I want to pivot a little bit. Let's talk about your daughter, your, your ninja, your, your amazing daughter. How, how is being an entrepreneur and just, and having your two businesses and having your husband, how does that all come together? Because for my listeners out there, and shoots, even me, I, I, I say all these things that you're doing. I'm like, wow, how does she do all that? How do you, how does everything you do affect you as a mother and affect the way you teach your daughter? It's helped me a lot in my journey with my daughter. I incorporate her in everything I do. So she knows very well about my optometric practices. She understands and knows what mommy does whether we do apartment investing, our property beliefs. Um, I do a lot of life, like real life experience teaching. So we travel a lot together. And when we travel in different countries, and I think that's the best way of teaching is real life hands-on hands -on experiences. Um, and when she sees how much mommy's working and doing these things and she's like i love it so she saves her money like her she has a little i didn't know she was stashing money away <laughs> and one day we and she was at she was probably two and a half at the time or you know and i was like 
And I found in her little play card that she was stashing cash. And I was like, Athena, what is this money? Why do you have money in your car? What are you going to do with this? And she was like, I'm going to buy hotels, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> she loves to travel and she loves hotels. So she goes, I'm going to invest in hotels. And I'm like, who says that? What kid says that at that young age? <laughs> she goes, don't, I'm not going to waste my money. She doesn't want to spend her money to buy toys. She thinks it's wasteful. She wants to invest her money in travel. <laughs> I, if you're not if you're not watching this on YouTube or wherever we're posting this, I'm crying. <laughs> that is like the funniest, sweetest thing that I've heard. Like I think ever. <laughs> Mommy, I want to buy hotels. Like I just I want to buy hotels. <laughs> I talk okay. Well, I talk to a lot of mommies. You right now are like mom of the year because <laughs> no, because. <laughs> that's so funny oh my goodness that is so adorable but folks listen to what Hwase is saying she teaches by showing her daughter what she does she doesn't just put her daughter on the side here daughter here's her schoolwork. she shows her by taking her to other countries, to her hotel, to her practice, to just to teach her daughter. And I'm sure you're going to agree with me. Like there is no limit to what she can do. Oh no, not at all. We sponsored two kids, um, one in the Philippines and one in Ecuador. And so she, she says that's her brother and her sister. Oh. And uh, so it's really sweet. Um, to have that and she sees what you know so she knows how blessed she is and how grateful so we do that as a family together we say every day we pray together we say what we're grateful together you know we we put on music in the morning so we blast music we dance we do our bed you know we do our normal things but we make it fun for her and you know so she has her own cooking show she helps mommy cook and prep you know <laughs> So it's, 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 a, it's a fun in this Gonzalez home. So this COVID-19 and now homeschooling her and doing science experiments and just, we're having a ton of fun, a lot of quality time. And she, you know, she said to me the other day and it, it just melted my heart. And she was like, you know, mommy. And she said, mommy and daddy, I, I don't need any more gifts because you and Papi are the best gifts I can ever have. And I was just like, oh. Oh my, heart. <laughs> oh, my heart. And she just said that while we were praying and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's just the sweetest thing, you know? So well, when are you going to write that book on parenting and real estate? Because I think there's so many, there's so many mommies out there could, that could benefit from that book. I'm, <laughs> I'm only like half joking. because <laughs> That is that it, again, like this is the second sweetest thing that I've heard in, in as many minutes. Oh my goodness. But that's, that's like hashtag mom parenting goals to have your children be like, you are, you are the gift mommy and daddy. And oh, I forgot who I was talking to about that. I think it was Angel Renee. Like she was, she was reminding all the mamas out there, like we treat or when when we think of our children, at least I do, I think of them as, as gifts that, you know, our creator has bestowed on me, but flip it. We're and I, yes, we're gifts to our children. It's the same thing. We're gifts to each other. So treat yourself as a gift. And it sounds like Hua, that you treat yourself as a gift. You treat yourself well, you educate yourself, you, put yourself out to the world and to your daughter as this amazing woman that does all these things. And she sees that and she loves it. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, the way you put it, it's not really rocket science. You don't have to get a doctorate in motherhood to know that if you show your children the right way to do things, the right way to think about things, the right way to show them that they can do it too, mm -hmm. then that's how they'll grow up, right? 
Right. And she is fearless. You know, her, her nickname Ninja is because she's so fearless. She teaches, she teaches us so much. (laughs) My five-year-old teaches us so much, you know, she she is. So when mommy's scared to do something, Mm -hmm. you know, she, she motivates me to really do things. And I've grown a lot from my comfort zone. And, you know, if you met me 15 years ago and met, and today, totally different. Like I've grown and stretched so much as, as I imagine most of your mommies on the show here. Um, but it's, you know, my, my husband is absolutely phenomenal. I think a lot of my growth, I really, really, it's with the help of my husband. You know, let's, let's dig in. It's, it's a, let's dig in a little bit on that. Cause it's a, uh, because we all grow, we all grow and change, but it sounds like your story has been one of like 15 years is here and you're like above into the stratosphere right now. Like, yes, it's a huge shift in mindset. And just, I think 15 years ago when I first met my husband, um, I was very closed off because I grew up very, it's very hard. It was a very hard beginning and I've, I've learned to protect and build layers and layers. And I was always an overachiever, but it was an unfulfilling over journey. Even though I was always the top of everything, I still was not very fulfilled at that time. So it was very hard because I was so hard on myself. And, um, and I, I, you know, I, um, I just couldn't understand why. I was like, you know, in everyone else's mind, they were like, you've achieved so much, but in my heart, I just didn't feel fulfilled at the time. Um, and it's, people are like, why, why would you feel that, you know? Um, but after being with my husband and growing that journey, and he really helped me kind of peel layers up my heart and my emotions and really truly be in touch with my heart again, that's when my true growth began and my self-care and self-love really began. And it was a different journey for me. And so how I viewed success is very different than what my expectations are, were back then. So it's, it's, it's a different journey. You know, I'm much more, you know, definitely more grateful. I've experienced a lot of deaths that people that were close to me that I think have opened my eyes a lot. Just, um, and it, I've started a, a spiritual journey that wasn't a part of me 15 years ago either. So it's a lot of different things that I've kind of grown to become the person where I am now, where I, it's like, okay, now I've truly developed happiness, um, you know, in this journey. And my husband has been a big key to that, you know? Um, so today I was like, you know, if I die today, I have lived very well, you know, and I live every day today because it's, it's a true blessing. It's like, I live every day today. Like it's my last day. You know, that, that right there is, I totally see eye to eye with that mindset, being grateful for today as today is yesterday happened tomorrow hasn't happened yet. So don't worry about it today. Be a gift, be present be in the moment and to touch on what you just talked about being from 15 years ago, being very success driven and not allowing, it sounds like you didn't allow yourself to have, to have gratitude and, or to see your successes Mm -hmm. and to kind of just give yourself a, a pat on the back. I mean, I think where you are today I because it's from your story is just amazing. The sex, the success that you've had, and will continue to have into the future. But it sounds like now you allow yourself to be grateful for those successes. You allow yourself to pat yourself on the back. And knowing that, giving yourself a pat on the back moves yourself forward. Right. So, celebrating small victories. You yes. Know, every yes. day. <laughs> and there's so many mamas out there and I, that have that difficulty. I know I did for a long time to like really, it was more for me. It was like n- always like focusing on the negative, like the things that didn't get done or I didn't do instead of really focusing on, okay, I did these things. And these are the things that are pushing me forward by 
holding on to those things that you didn't do or you haven't done will keep you like will keep you there you won't move forward but if you let those things go you'll move forward with such momentum as Hua has it's amazing so thank you for sharing that thank you for diving deep with me so before I let you go I'm gonna add two more questions the first one is if you could give one piece of absolute advice you can only say one more thing to all of my mamas out there and papas too what would it be i would say don't get jaded with the daily routines like have true passion and fulfillment each day with each act you know so that's one of the big things is don't make it mundane, make it, you know, where you're feeling it and you're enjoying it and you're truly loving it. And not just because it, it, it's a to do thing. That's, I mean, like, like dancing in the morning, <laughs> right? <laughs> make, I love this. I mean, make life fun. Yes. That's like, that shouldn't be like, that shouldn't be mind blowing. But I know for a lot of my mamas out there, that's going to be make life fun, make the mundane, make brushing your children's teeth fun, make it fun for them, make it fun for you. Okay, so my last question is if any of my listeners want to get a hold of you or want to get more information about what you do or how they can get their eyes checked, how do they, how do they find you? Um, they can email me at um, hua, H-O-A, at eyepieces, E-Y-E, P-I-E-C-E-S, dot, I mean, eyepiecesinvesting.com. Perfect. Hua at eyepiecesinvesting.com. I'll leave that in the show notes. Again, thank you so much, Hua. You made me laugh, cry. You made, me, made my heart full today. And I'm sure you made all my listeners heart full today because there's so much information that you just gave to us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Peely. And to all my listeners out there, I am so grateful to you for listening to our show today. And if you like what you heard, please rate, review, subscribe, all those buttons, please push them all. And thank you so very much. I'm so grateful. You'll have a great day. Be safe, be well, and thank you.